Hello guys, I'm Manphalanges, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace a micro switch and a mouse. So you might want to replace the micro switches because you might be getting the double click issue, or maybe you've had your mouse for a long time, the switches just aren't as good as they used to be, or, I don't know, whatever reason you may have, I'll show you how to do it here. So here I have a Logitech G100S, um, cable's already out, but point is, <clears throat> you're going to start out by getting, um, you're going to need the mouse that you want to repair, uh, basically loner mouse to harvest the switches from and then you're gonna need a flathead and Phillips head small screwdriver you're gonna need a soldering iron and if you have one you definitely want to get yourself a desoldering pump this is I got this thing for four bucks off of Amazon you can look it up uh, just search like ZD 108 desoldering pump <clears throat> and some solder as well. So we're going to start out by harvesting the switch from this guy. So first of all, um, we're going to take it apart. I already have this taken apart. It just came apart with one screw in the bottom here. And then once that was apart, I removed the cable, removed the PCB, removed the ball. Oh, okay. There we go. So that's what we're going to be working with here. I'll zoom into this. Okay, now to remove this micro switch, there are three solder joints on the bottom here. And we're going to have to unsolder all three. And soldering, if you're not really familiar with it, um, you know, I would experiment a little bit before you go and start trying to unsolder your, you know, really nice mouse or something. And that's why I'm starting out here with the cheap PCB. You know, this one I don't really care too much about. You can see how to remove the other micro switch for right mouse. So. I'm going to put a weight on top of this just so it's easier for me to unsolder. Clean off the tip of my soldering iron. Right now my iron is at 520 degrees, which is a little bit on the hotter side, but I don't think it'll matter too much for this video. Okay. And I have my desoldering pump ready to go. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to put my iron against the pad and the stem here. The stem is the part poking through and the pad is the little circular bit around it and you're going to wait for it to liquefy and then you're going to use the desoldering pump to just suck up the remaining solder. There you go, it's liquid. Boom. And you're going to do this three times. I already did this joint off camera, but here we go. And this is older solder, so it looks a little funky, but cool. Let's see how he did there. Oh yeah, that fell out just like that. So there we go. That's the micro switch in case you were wondering. Cool. Moving on to the other mouse. So here's the G100S. I already took it apart, but basically how the G100 works and how most mice work is they have screws underneath the feet. The G100 only has one in the bottom foot here. There's none in the top feet. All their mice are different. I would recommend going on Google, you know, if you're going to, like, take apart a Razer Death Adder, search Razer Death Adder Chroma disassembly kind of thing, and they'll show you the screw locations. So for me, um, it was just under this back foot here, and this is what you use the flathead screwdriver for, and you want to be very, very careful. These mouse feet, if you destroy them, you can get replacements from eBay for 5 ten, to 10 bucks, but, I mean, who wants to do that? So um, be very careful, and you want to separate it from the plastic and you want to be careful with this because some mice feet are more rigid than others these ones are kind of bendy so you can kind of see me just peeling it back with my fingers but sometimes you'll want to get your screwdriver really underneath them and you know pry it up like you're 
like you're, you know, you're flipping a pancake. You don't just want to grab half the pancake and pull up. You want to get underneath it completely and then pull up. Weird analogy, but it works. And then there's the screw that I already unscrewed. So I'll just leave that there. All right. And I took off the shell. It was held in by two little tabs at the top there. So I just kind of pulled backward and then up. And then here we have the PCB. Um, you can already see I replaced some micro switches in here, but there were two screws right here and right here, both Phillips heads, so I removed those, and this pops out. You want to leave the lens and the shell behind, the lens is just part of the optical laser focusing stuff. Um, so, uh, and then also the cable. The cable, I'll show you guys the cable. This is what a cable will look like when it's connected in, um, and basically, you're going to want to be careful with the cable as well. You want to grab by the connector and pull. And it also helps if you kind of wiggle a little bit. You don't want to pull by the wires because if you pull by the wires, you could, you know, rip one of them out of there and that's not good. Again, replacement cables are readily available for 5 to $10, but yeah, avoid it if you can. And then we're going to be unsoldering this guy right here. This is actually my DPI switch. Um, I actually got all the my flavors of switches here that I already really like in my G100S, so DPI switch it is. So we're going to flip this sucker upside down, and again, one, two, three points that we need to unsolder. I'll zoom in for you guys. Again, I'll put my weight on the PCB just so I have a helping hand. Alright, got my pump ready. Cool. Now it's the same procedure. You can go a little bit lower temperature if you're worried about ruining your PCB. Just know that you'll have to keep you'll have to keep the iron on the solder for a little bit longer. If you're at all nervous about unsoldering or desoldering, buy yourself some cheap electronics, take apart a cheap electronic device in your home or something, and practice on that. Um, that's literally, I did that with my girlfriend the other day. I literally just gave her this PCB, and she unsoldered, she unsoldered this micro switch over here, and then resoldered and soldered it all on her own in like five minutes. So um, that's where the desoldering pump really comes in handy. Makes life a lot easier. You can use... You can desolder without the desoldering pump, but it is not, I'm not going to recommend it at all. It is totally worth, you know, waiting the couple days for shipping and spending the $4. So there's the kale switch that we're getting rid of. And then now we'll take the switch that we uh, harvested from the ball mouse. And you can see right here on the PCB, there's printed, that's where the little bar goes, so that's where the white bar will go. Um, some PCBs do not have um, these little bars printed on them, and... They're symmetrical, so you can put them in backwards. So, um, if it helps, before you start unsoldering or desoldering or anything, take a picture and then reference the picture. That's what I do sometimes. Anyway, so we'll just slide that through the hole there. Flip it over. Okay, and there we go. Now we just got to resolder the three. So, resoldering is honestly, I like it more. <laughs> I think it's more fun. You don't have to use the pump. So, we just get ourselves some solder here. Um, you do want to typically use leaded solder, rosin core too. It makes life a lot easier. Um, I've worked with regular non-rosin core solder and it's it works, but it's a pain in the butt. So what we need to do here is we need to, again, heat both the stem and the pad underneath. And you need both of them to liquefy into solder. So this, sometimes it helps if you tin the tip of your soldering iron just a little bit. Just put a little bit of solder on there. And then you'll see the solder actually change color. So the pad, you guys can kind of tell in the video, the pad has a tiny bit of solder on it. And you can actually see that change color. And that's how you know that the pad is liquefied. And then once that's done, just push, 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 push the solder into it and remove. So you can see I'm actually pushing the solder into the joint. Push, 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 push. That one wasn't as good, but hey, it all works. And these last ones are, are, are square, so they always, oops, they always turn out being a little bit ugly. There we go. 
and boom, just like that you're all done. And then you just reassemble it the reverse way. Um, something I like to do personally before I reassemble everything completely is I'll plug the USB cable in here, I'll plug my mouse USB end into the computer, and I'll test all the clicks just to make sure they work. And then when you reassemble, you know, make sure you have your lens aligned correctly. You shouldn't have to force anything in. Rescrew those bits in. Shell back together, you know, cable through. Usually there will be a cable routing area like on this mouse. The cable goes up through here, around, and through this little groove here, and then out the front. Slide it in, press down, screw it together, and there you go. That's how you replace a micro switch. Not too difficult, um, does take a little bit of practice, so I do recommend trying, you know, some stuff out on your own. But all in all, a very straightforward process. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If this video wasn't informative enough, go ahead and watch. Like, I really encourage you guys, there's much more knowledgeable people out there on soldering than me. Um, honestly, like, there's so many soldering videos on YouTube, just give them a watch. Just because they're not soldering a micro switch doesn't mean that it's irrelevant to you, so... Um, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Any questions, leave them down below, and I'll try to respond to all of them. And, uh, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next.